White Branch Arch, the Narrows, is one of the most unusual sandstone arches in the world because it's one of the few which has a road over it. This road, commonly known as the Narrows Road or Barker's Branch Road, was for decades an important thoroughfare for oil well crews, loggers, hunters, horse riders, cavers, and rock climbers. This road brought wealth to local people because it provided access to oil and natural gas resources on their properties. And long before the phrase adventure tourism was coined, it was for many a road to adventure and spectacular Kentucky scenery. In the 1970s, during the last oil boom in Kentucky, Narrows Road was kept groomed and maintained to such a degree that it could be driven in almost any kind of vehicle. But as the oil boom ended, so did the maintenance, and slowly the forces of nature began to take their toll. In the early 90s, rains turned a steep section of the road into a boulder field, making it impassable with anything except jeeps, ATVs, or dune buggies. In the last decade, however, most of the damage came by the hand of man. Most who drove the road did so responsibly, but some did not. In the pursuit of fun and motorized adventure, they would grind their spinning tires in the road, turning small potholes into huge mud ponds. None set out to destroy the road or make it difficult for others to travel, but that is what happened. The ponds and ditches seen here have not been driven through for more than three years and are in the process of healing, but the damage that was done will be evident for decades. Thanks to the destruction wrought by rubber tires and adventurous drivers, the Narrows itself, White's Branch Arch, went from being a beautiful rustic highway to a series of small cliffs which could only be negotiated by serious off-road vehicles like rock crawlers. On the western end of the road, far from the boundaries of Natural Bridge State Park, damage is still being done. To prove themselves or their machines, some people go off-road and tear into hillsides, creating new and steeper and more challenging roads. Others innocently follow, unaware of the environmental damage being done, and the erosion and ugly gouges become even deeper. Several years ago, using funds from the sale of Kentucky Nature license plates, the Kentucky State Nature Preserves Commission purchased lands on the south side of Natural Bridge State Park and incorporated them into the park. This land is now both state park and state nature preserve, and portions of the Narrows Road are part of it. Interestingly, the Shell Toy Trace follows the Narrows Road from its eastern entrance to a gate into Natural Bridge Park. Although a sign states, Road Closed, the Shell Toy Trace permits travel by foot, by bicycle, and in most places, by horse. In 2006, to discourage people from using the road, those who managed the nature preserve had hundreds of tons of large boulders strategically placed, many berms built, and several massive trenches dug. Most of these barriers are located on the Narrows Road itself, while others block side roads which lead into the preserve. These pictures do not begin to convey the enormity of the environmental damage done by these barriers. On a steep section of the road, north of the Narrows, a series of trenches spanning hundreds of feet makes even foot travel treacherous. The environmental damage done by these barriers is much greater than the damage done by the vehicles they were designed to keep out. Many in the off-roading community are crying hypocrisy because of this, and they are justified in doing so. Indeed, the entire system of barriers are not just designed to keep out motor vehicles, but also mountain bikes, horses, and hikers are not fit and agile. It represents discrimination on a massive scale. The largest of these trenches, located the east of White's Branch Arch, is over 100 feet long, about 40 feet wide, and nearly 15 feet deep in places. On either side of it are large berms and boulders, and on one side a heavy steel guardrail has been installed. Tons of dirt and rock were moved in order to create this monstrosity and if the excavation crew had not hit rock in the central portion of the trench, it would have been dug deeper. The east side of this trench is so steep that it's something of a miracle that no one has been injured traversing it. Just as Natural Bridge Cave was gated with public money, but without public hearings or approval, the closure of the Narrows Road was also done without the input or approval of the taxpayers of Kentucky. 
and the same officials responsible for closing one or responsible for closing the other. In the 1990s, a small cadre of rock climbers trespassed on private land without the owner's knowledge or permission and drilled a large number of holes in a cliff wall and installed bolts and hangers to increase the safety of their climbing activities. Because this beautiful sandstone cliff was naturally riddled with thousands of small openings, or pockets, the climbers called it pocket wall, and it quickly became one of the most renowned sport climbing walls on earth. Climbers drove the Narrows Road to get to pocket wall. The special place was on land purchased by the Nature Preserves Commission and added to Natural Bridge State Park, and once that was done, rock climbing was banned and the bolts were removed. For most of its existence, the Narrows Road provided access to oil and gas wells scattered along its length. Oil companies used miles of pipes and cables and other hardware to get the oil from ground to market. Tons of this scrap is still visible along the sides of the road, and tons more lies deep within the nature preserve. When the road was closed, utility poles were cut and left to lay where they fell. Hardware attached to the poles was seldom removed. These poles still lay along the road, their carcinogenic creosote slowly leaching into the ground. People running amuck in their off-road vehicles did damage to the soil and rocks over which they drove, and climbers did damage to the beautiful rock of pocket wall, and both left trash in their wake. Off-roaders left a few cans on bottles, while climbers left bolts in the cliff wall. The trash left on pocket wall so angered the managers of the nature preserve that they paid to have it removed. But the tons of truly ugly trash left from the oil and gas operations was left untouched, and so long as the motor vehicles are unable to use the road, this trash can never be removed. The hypocrisy of leaving a nature preserve in such a terrible state, while not tolerating the bolts and pocket wall, might outweigh the hypocrisy of the destructive way in which the Narrows Road was closed. Because of the need of road access when doing rescues or fighting forest fires, because of the great need for domestically produced oil and natural gas, and because of the need to bring tourist dollars into this state, it seems illogical that Narrows Road is kept closed. Years ago, when it was graded and maintained, off-road enthusiasts did little damage to it because it provided no fun mud holes and no great challenges. And that is how it would be if the road was reopened and properly maintained. Misuse could be greatly minimized by simply confiscating the vehicles of those who drive irresponsibly. Opening the road would pose little danger to the nature preserve because most of it is surrounded by steep cliffs, leaving few ways to drive or even walk in. The few places where vehicles once entered, such as the lane to pocket wall, have been blocked to such a degree that even foot travel is exceedingly difficult. There might also be logic to reopening pocket wall to climbing. The damage to this beautiful cliff has long been done. With appropriate regulations and penalties, further damage to it and other nearby cliffs could be minimized and its reopening would be of great benefit to local businesses. It is obvious that our public lands must be protected. No reasonable person could argue against this. It is also obvious that government-ordained destruction, such as these massive trenches, must never be allowed to happen again. Contrary to what some may believe, our state parks and nature preserves are not owned by the public servants who manage them. They are owned by the taxpayers of Kentucky, and as such, we have every right to decide how they are managed, and how to enjoy them in whatever ways we collectively deem proper. That is what democracy is all about. If our laws are not changed, and if common sense is not quickly reintroduced into the management of Kentucky's beautiful public lands, one day soon only a privileged few may ever be allowed to see them. To learn how you can help regain lost access rights to public lands, send an email to saveourcave at yahoo.com and let us know that you want to help. Your help is especially needed if you live outside of Kentucky, because the money you bring to this state is what enables our beautiful parks to remain open. You can also learn more about the Narrows Road and other issues by visiting us at saveourcave.org.